Okay, so do the best you can on this warm up in the next few minutes, and then we'll some of the stuff that we be that we're doing up here. You're going to end up utilizing when we're doing sequences. So, just a few minutes on it. Well, hey, let's get uh, one through five done up here, okay? So when you're doing them, go ahead and put them under the document camera. Just go ahead and write your answers up there. So one per person. You can bring your partner up there. What answer, Brooke? How about... Six point one. Six point one. That's the one I was gonna do. That just means it's well used. Yeah, you can do number four for me. Yeah, what is it? Third twenty three. Nope. Oh, she, she got you. Never mind. Just go. You can write it. Well, what did you guys get? Negative two. For four? No, for four I got twenty three. Twenty three. Eighteen. Eighteen. I got eighteen. Yeah, I put eighteen. And for number six, you get 2.5. Yeah. I need to finish number six. Are you stuck on it? I was. Uh, no, I was shaving, and so I was trying to get this part right here, which I got on this side, but I was running late for the right. last, and so I didn't do this. <laughs> hey, let's check them. Number, number one. Number one, we got a negative two. Good. We have two more negatives and positives. Number two, well done. Common denominator when you're adding fractions, two-thirds, one-third, and one-third. That gives us a total of two plus one plus one is four-thirds, also known as one and one-third. Well done. Well done. Number three, 5.3 and 8 tenths is 6.1, or $5.30 and 80 cents is $6.10. Number four, how many of you combine these first? How many distributed first? Either way works. I think it's a little quicker to go 4 minus 1 is 3 times 6 is 18. Or you could have done 6 times 4 is 24, and 6 times 1 is 6, 24 minus 6 is 18. Either way works. Number five, same thing. This gives us negative three here. And negative three times negative three is positive nine. Good work. Now, number six, would it be quicker to distribute or to add these two first? Distribute because they don't have the common denominator? So when we're distributing, are we going to make the, the denominators bigger or smaller? It become bigger, right? And then we're going to have to find a common denominator. So it might be easier to add first. What what would the common denominator of these two be? Twelve. Twelve. So twelve and twelve. And what do we multiply three by to get twelve? Four. Four. So ten times four is forty. Forty. And four times what is twelve? Three. So five times three is. 15, so we have 40 twelfths and 15 twelfths, so we're a grand total of 55 twelfths times 12 fifths. Now, how many can cross cancel? How many know how to reduce? Right, you look at the top number, you say what goes into both this 12 and 5? Nothing does. But does something go into 12 and 12? Yeah. Yeah, 12 does. Any top with any bottom. So 12 goes into 12, goes in once, and once. Does anything go into 5 and 55? Five. Five. 5 goes into 5 once, and 55? 11. 11. The answer is 11. Yeah, how many use calculator? Yeah, that works, but it's good to know how to do that. The problem with calculators are a lot of times the things we do with numbers right now as you get to advanced algebra they're not numbers anymore they're letters 
So you remember quadratics, like x squared plus 4x minus 2? When you get to advanced algebra, we put that in a fraction. And we add those fractions up. And you can't put that in a calculator. Yeah, I guess so. All right. We're going to put number 7. We're going to put negative 2 in. What's 3 fourths and negative 2? Negative 5 fourths. How many use a calculator? Let's say you're at negative 2 and you go 3 fourths of the way. So you're at 0 here. Here's negative 2. If I go 3 fourths back towards the positive, where am I at now? Am I at negative 1? Have I made it to negative 1? I'm almost there. Where am I actually at? Negative 2 and 1 fourths will be this way. Yeah, negative 1 and 1 fourth. You could have wrote it as negative 5 fourths. The other way to look at that is to say 3 fourths plus negative 2. Well, negative 2 is negative 2 over 1. And if I want to make that into force, what do I need to multiply this by? How do I, what do I need to multiply 1 by to make force? 4. And so that means I'll multiply this by 4. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So 3 plus negative 8 is? Negative 5 over 4, which is the same thing as negative 1 and 1 4. Even if you use your calculator, try to learn how to do it by hand. 5.1 minus 2.8. If you have 51 and you go back 30, how far are you? Yeah. Yeah, it's 2.3, right? How many can do that in your head? Good. Hey, think of 5.1 as 51. Think of 2.8 as 28. 51, 28 is really close to what? 30. 30. 51 minus 30 is? That's not good. 51, 41. 31. 21. Good, 21. All right, that's minus 30. You don't want to go 30. You only want to go... 28, so it's two less or two more than that, which is 2.3, as Victoria said that. Good job. Okay, put 5 in here. I'm spending too much time on this. 5 minus 1 is? 4. 4. 6 times 4, good buddy? 4. 4. And put negative 4 here. 5 minus 1? 4. four. Times negative 4. Plus 10. Negative 6. All right. Hey, quick, quick review to get our minds working here. Okay? Here's our objectives today. We're going to recognize and extend arithmetic sequence, and then we're going to find a given term of an arithmetic sequence. Okay? So you want to get those learning goals down? I'm good. A good participation on that. How many of you did math for fun over break? Just for fun. Good. That's nice work. Watch, watch some number files. That was good stuff. Anyone know what number files is? It's on YouTube. It's a YouTube station. Look up number files. It's pretty good. They did a domino. They demonstrated a computer, how a computer works using dominoes. What? It was awesome. Yeah, you should watch it. Not right now. Ashley just wants to get out of work right now. Come on, Ashley. Watch it at home, though. Maybe at lunch tomorrow with all your friends at the lunch table. Just throw on some number files. Oh, YouTube. You can't get YouTube. Sorry. Oh, you can't? On Wi Fi? Uh -huh. Really? That's ridiculous. 
Do you frown on it? I frown on it. I'll be going through all of these today. Yeah, pretty fun, huh? You're welcome. Angel, come on. I was just wondering. I thought it was like part of the work, too. No way. We may skip a few here and there, so make sure you stand up, okay? Yeah. Hey, here we go. Sounds like we're good? Hey, the vocabulary terms we're going to want to define today. So maybe put them, give, write down the term and put, give yourself a, an area where you can define each of these, okay? Sequence, term, arithmetic, sequence, and common difference. So give yourself a little room where you can define it next to each of them. Huh? I don't know. It depends if you write with bubbly writing or not. If it's a, if you're a bubbly writer, then they're long definition. Some people are bubbly writers. I am not a bubbly writer. I had a college roommate. He was a bubbly writer. I made fun of him. Just bubbly. He had bubbly writing. I don't know. It's okay. He was a good writer. He also got a lot of tickets for parking in the wrong spot. Like he didn't really care. He just parked wherever so he could get to class. Huh? Chase. All right. Here. We go if I can switch the page. All right. Hey, on your own, read that. About a thunderstorm. Don't get scared. Don't write it down, read it. No. Oh. Hey, if you're talking, quit talking, read. Okay, so one of those terms we had was sequence, right? Sequence. A sequence is a list of numbers that often forms a pattern. And then each number in that sequence we call a term. So for instance, if I gave you the sequence 2, 4, 6, you would say 8, eight and then 10, ten and 12. Okay, so this is a sequence. Sometimes it's easier to define things by making a making an example up. This one value in the sequence is called a term. Does it have to be the first one? No, it could be this one. This one's a term also. It's just the first one is a special term. We call it a sub 1. This term is a special one as well. It's called a sub Four, yeah. Hey, this one's actually special as well. This one's called A sub six. Hey, this one's actually special as well. It's called A sub. Hey, this one's actually called A sub. Now, everyone tell your neighbor what this one's called and why it's called that. Okay, wrap up conversation, please. You know? Okay, there are a few of you. Go ahead. Yeah, Savannah. A sub 3, very good. Maddie, why is it A sub 3? Okay, the first reason is the correct reason. The second one's just a coincidence. Okay? So what you said first, that's very true. It's the third number in the term. So we call it a sub three. This a just means it just means that's one of the that we're trying to find a number that is the third term in this sequence. The three just tells us what term we're looking for. Okay? 
So the next term would be called everyone? A sub, seven. A sub 7. That wasn't everyone. That didn't go. Like I was picturing everyone yelling in my head. It was amazing. So after that one, the next one would be everyone? A sub 8. See, that's what I was picturing. That made me feel good. Oh, I didn't record. There we go. All right. Hey. Very good. So in the sequence, here's our uh, lightning strikes. Don't get scared. Okay. Hey, the time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Notice the distance, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. It's going up by 2 tenths every time. This is a common difference. The common difference is what it were increasing or decreasing by every time. Remember last week or right after, right before spring break when I talked about this, I said adding and subtracting, they're kind of lumped together. When you're subtracting, you're actually adding a negative. Or when you're dividing, you're actually multiplying by a number less than one, greater than zero. Okay, so we only deal with adding when we're talking about this. However, you could be going down as well. You could be subtracting because you're adding a negative. Okay, this is a common difference. Our common difference here is two tenths. And that means it's an arithmetic sequence. When you're adding, when you have a common difference every time, you have an arithmetic sequence. Wait, wait, wait. Adding is, okay. Yep. When you're adding the same amount every time, which we call a common difference, it gives us an arithmetic sequence. If you're not adding the same amount every time, then it's not an arithmetic sequence. Okay? So since we're adding the same amount, we call this, this thing right here is called the common difference. Because they're the same. Yep. Yeah. So this is our common difference. And since we have a common difference, it's an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so right now I need you to tell your neighbor what you must have in order to have an arithmetic sequence. All right, a volunteer to tell me. Victoria, what do you got? In order to have arithmetic sequence, we have to have a common difference. Very good. And if we have a common difference, we have a an arithmetic sequence. All right. Here we go. Any questions there? Moving on. All right. Hey, we've defined all of our variables. Yes? Um, so with the arithmetic sequence, can uh -huh. you subtract the same number each time? You could. Yeah, that's a good question. You could subtract the same number each time. That's as well. Just means you're adding a negative then. Okay? Hey, the variable A is often used to represent the terms in a sequence. So for instance, the variable A sub 9, read as A sub 9, is the ninth term. We talked about that just a few minutes ago, right? That's what we did right here. Huh? 18. No. Oh, on that. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Okay. To designate any term, we write the nth term which is a sub n. It can be any number in our sequence. So for instance, in our previous sequence, where we had 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, that's what those dots mean. It means so on. Keeps going like that. Okay. When we had that sequence, if I want to know what a sub, a sub, if I want to just say any term, that's a sub n a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus d. That is the formula to find the next term in the sequence. What is the next term? 10. 10. How many use this formula to find it? I'll tell you you did. You just don't know you are. What are we adding? What's the common difference here? 2. two. So the common difference is 2. So in this case, D is 2. And we're adding 
the 2, 2. Well, we're trying to find a sub n. So we're trying to find the next term. What, what is the next term? Well, it's, we know it's 10, but a sub 1, 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5. We're trying to find a sub 5. So a sub 5, so n equals what here? We're saying n is what? We're saying it's 5. n is 5. A sub 5 is equal to A sub 5 minus 1. What's A sub 5 minus 1? A sub 4. Yeah, it means just the one before it. A sub 4 plus 2. A sub 5, this one, is equal to A sub 4, that one, plus 2. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, because A sub 4 is actually what? It's 8. Right? Plus 2 is... 10. Now, how many, how many use the formula to find that? How many just found it? Yeah, this is called the recursive formula. You want to write that term down because you're going to see it, or that word down. It's recursive formula. The recursive formula is the formula you actually, sorry, can't read that there. I don't know why that won't zoom or why that won't focus well there. The recursive formula is the formula that we have, but we actually never use. We always do it in our head. But you need to know what the recursive formula is. You need to know how to read this. Okay? It's a recursive formula. So how many do you guys think that was terribly helpful? Yeah, the formula is not too easy to use, is it? Okay? But what's going to happen is you know we want you to be able to read this formula. And there's another formula we're going to use to find the explicit. It's called the explicit. And that's when I say, hey, what happens if we want to find a sub? Oops. What if we want to find a sub 97? <coughs> that means the 97th term. Now, if I gave you enough time, some of you would just like go out to the 97th term. Okay? But there's another formula, not the recursive, but another formula that will help us do that. So we'll get to that here in a minute. All right. Go for it. Determine whether the sequence appears to be an arithmetic sequence. If so, find the common difference in the next three terms. Ready and go. Ashley, what do you think? A four. A four? Is it an arithmetic sequence? Yes, because you're adding 4 every time. So yes, it's an arithmetic sequence. So the next three terms are? 25, 29, and 33. All right, so adding 4 each time. Questions on it? Pretty good? All right, next one. This same one. Let's move on. Oh, we got that. All right. Determine whether the sequence appears to be an arithmetic sequence. If so, find the next. Or find the common difference in the next three terms. Next one. No. That's what I said. Sometimes we'll skip. common difference. There is a pattern though, right? Yes. Yeah. Minus 2 or plus negative 2. Minus 3, minus 4. We could keep going, right? Yeah, but it's not a common difference. So no, this is not, not an arithmetic sequence. Because there is no common difference. All right. 
Ashley. I mean like knowing that these two differ by one? Yeah. yeah, that's a different order pattern. That we're not dealing with that when we're dealing with an arithmetic sequence. We're just looking at the first order. Okay? A good question though. Yeah, when you start studying some more and you get in more depth, yeah, that's how you can do that. Yeah. In the equation, what does A stand for? A just means like the the term, this term. It's just a variable saying. Okay. Yeah. okay. Hey, let's try this one. Fractions, man. Don't get scared. Wait, do we solve it? Well, is it a sequence? Is it an arithmetic sequence? Yeah or nay? <laughs> kind of tougher with the fractions. Hey, the denominator doesn't change though, right? Makes it easier. What are you adding to the top every time? Two? two? You add two to get from negative three to negative one? Yes. Two from negative one to one? Yes. Two from one to three? Yes. So I could add two here to get five over four. four. And I could add two more to get seven over four. And I could add two more to get nine over four. But it's not really adding two. What is it adding? Yeah, it's adding two fours. So the common difference here is add two fours, which some of you, I think, were saying is, what is two fours? Yeah, it's also one half. Okay. <laughs> kind of tougher, huh? Mm -hmm. Fractions make it a little more difficult, but remember, if it's a common denominator, ignore the denominator until the very end. Okay? Yeah, I'd text my friends about it too. It's good stuff. Okay? Send it out there. Tweet it. Okay? Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna skip this one for now. Okay, we've talked about the pattern. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. Let's say we have. No, don't draw this. Let me give you a, a pattern to follow here. Let's say I give you three, and then the next term. The next term is going to be five and then seven and then nine you guys have it? okay what's the common difference? tell your neighbor hey difference is? two we add two every time with that? I want to know what the 97th term is. I want to know what a sub 97 is. Well, what's the first term? Three. Okay, well, let's look at this pattern. They've kind of walked us through it here. Saying the first term is three. We're going to call that, the first term we call a sub, a sub one. A sub one is three. Everyone agree? Okay. A sub 1. Second term is what? A sub 2, which we're calling. Second term, which we're calling? 5. Hey, notice we've taken our first term and we added what to it? We went from 3 to 5. We added 2. Okay? The third term, a sub 3, is 7. What we did is we took our first term and how much did we add to it? We added how many twos to it? Two twos. Okay. Our, our fourth term, a sub 4, we took our first term and had added how many twos? 
Stay with me. From here to here, we added how many twos? Three twos. Okay, that gave us our third term. Actually, this was our, that would give us our fourth term. Let's say we wanted a fifth term. They didn't put that here. But my fifth term is actually, it's 11. It's A sub 5. Hey, how many twos am I adding to my first term? Four twos. Four twos. A sub 5 added how many twos? Four twos. Four twos. How many is A sub 6 going to add? Five twos. How many is a sub seven going to add? Six twos. Six twos. How many is a sub ninety seven going to add? Ninety six twos. Yeah. Ninety six twos. Yes. That is why it's like that. Yeah. So I have a sub one. Notice this number is always one less than the one we want to find. So we write that as, and that's what you're asking, Bree, that would be the n minus 1. And then we're multiplying it by 2. What's 2 represent in this? The, the, common. the common difference, so d. Okay, and that tells us a sub n. So that's our formula. Hey, let me give you this formula here. If I'm trying to find a specific term, a sub n is equal to a sub 1. It's equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. This is called the explicit formula. Okay? That's an explicit formula. That's when I'm looking for a specific term. Okay? You guys with me on it? Yep. All right. Hey, starting tomorrow, we're going to use that, that formula to help us through these other problems. So anything that says explicit, or find the, this certain term. Ignore that today. Don't cross it out. Just don't use it yet. Okay? Hey, so today, look at this. Yes, you have to do this. But look at it. You have to do number one. You have to do two. You have to do through six. You have to do the recursive part. You don't have to do this part quite yet. Okay? Very good. Yeah, I know. I was teaching. You know, that's what I told her. I said, we well, probably help the kids remember. Uh, thank you. Thank you, man. See you later. I injured Tyler. I know. Okay. And it wasn't even my fault. Not even on purpose, huh? No, like, he, he came and he got caught. And